お主フクロウのせがれか何があった賊どもが平田屋敷に巫女様を急ぐのじゃ今は幾年だ何をおかしな教えてくれ流線モーデの年であろう<笑>流線モーデ三年前かどういうことだ武士殿は古い記憶と言った何も覚えてはおらぬがこれは過去ということか Hello everyone and welcome to the Sekiro Boss Battle and Strategy Guide. In this particular series, I'm going to be looking at a first take or first glimpse on some of the most difficult opponents in the game, Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. In this particular series, I do have to say that the first run is on a live playthrough that I'm currently doing, so these are not the optimal things to do during the boss battles. But anyway, in this particular episode, we'll be looking at Juzo the Drunkard and Enshin the Shinobi Hunter. But before we even go that far, this is the Harata Estate memory, the first key thing you have to do as you progress into the memory. Is upgrade your gourd. Get your first gourd seat to Emma as fast as possible. This area is extremely difficult. Extremely difficult. If you don't manage to get two gourds instead of one, just due to the fact that the healing effect currently at the current level I'm at, or should I say the current level you will be when you reach the Harata estate, is relatively low. So, you need as much healing as you can, as the God's effectiveness is very, very weak. So, the first God seed you get, most definitely take it to Emma. Listen to what she has to say about God seeds, and listen to any other pieces of dialogue that can further elude as to the lore that you should be expecting in this game. The only other things I could further say and further give hints with the Harata estate is, like I said before, when dealing with Genichiro, patience, fortitude. This place is meant to challenge you, just like how the game is meant to challenge you. You can die many times. Don't be frustrated. Instead, learn from what's happening and move on. Be very careful also. What you do with your skill points, because what you choose to skill can determine a lot when it comes to the future of your playthrough. I feel like the the skill balance, or should I say, the game balance in regards to the skills in this game, is currently not well balanced. The reason why I say this is because certain moves, if not skilled properly. Feels as if you're playing the game at a much harder difficulty. I'm trying to imagine what it would be like with some of the skills that I've kept, and、uh, what, or should I say, how far I would have gone without those skills. The Mercury Counter is one such skill that I believe is quite necessary in the early game, as you will fight a lot of people who use thrusting attacks. The reason why I decided to get it was to fight against Enshin, the Shinobi Hunter. But sadly, I couldn't get the timing of the counter hit on his attacks because I still say the bane of deflections in this game is delayed attacks. That stagger, that moment of doubt, can be the difference between life and death or being hit. But anyway, moving back to the Arata estate, as you get towards this particular point, we'll be dealing with、uh, Enshin, the Shinobi Hunter. A very powerful foe. Before you can even progress towards Juzo, the drunkard, the boss of this particular episode, the best thing I can say is try to get a lethal or a death blow on him as quickly as possible. There is a way to stealth everyone in this area and then fight him 1v1 and still get the stealth death blow. The only reason I'm not showing it is because that method takes a long amount of time and my patience runs thin. When I die continuously. So, when you get your first stealth death blow, your first thing you have to do is clear the archers along the runway. 
these will pause and make the fight extremely harder than it has to be. Most people won't follow you towards the bridge, so you're best off fighting on the other side of the bridge. The reason why I say this is because you don't want to fight on the bridge, uh, that in itself is a danger. The reason why I just showed that particular part of me dying for anyone wondering is because I was trying to get the, the specific timings of the miracle counter and sadly I couldn't get it. But as you draw him further to the bridge, the AI isn't really necessarily built to fight in this location. You are outside of its threshold. So you can use that to your advantage to pull enemies 1v1, do a better job of fighting them than I am, and most definitely don't take as much damage as I'm taking. Uh, at this particular point, my patience had run thin and I had decided to take things a little bit more recklessly. On another hand, when dealing with Enshin the Shinobi Hunter, you have to understand that his thrusts are quite quick and have extremely long range. Jumping is not necessarily a good thing to do but his right hand side is his weaker side. The problem with that is, <laughs> when you start stepping to the right, uh, it's very easy for him to then do his sweeping attack. But if you pull him further enough, the AI lets go and it starts trying to walk back to where its starting position is. You use that to your advantage and then you get the kill. At this particular point, you get your prayer beads something that's very important after this segment to level up your character get more vitality and posture and as you progress forward you would have at least gotten a decent amount of money and experience that you can use and this will allow you to further progress in the arata estate and as you go deeper you find yourself another sculptor's idol and some oil お主このアグレシノビも捨てたものではないわわしは若様を苦労様を救わねばならんそうせねば一心様に申し訳が立たぬ共に参れ and luckily enough you gain aid when fighting Juzo the Drunkard from uh, one of Kuro's retainers during the Dragon Spring pilgrimage three years before the, the current events of the game. So in this particular memory luckily enough you get aid and my best advice in this location is kill the enemies, the ruffians as fast as possible and also try retain Juzo's attention. You do not want him to deal a lot of damage to the retainer while you're still trying to um, clear out the riffraff. Reason being, you need the retainer as a meat shield against Jizo. He's good at taking away his attention and also he's good at allowing you to get a lot of hits in. This fight requires a lot of patience and though I made many mistakes, one thing you always have to keep in mind, do not chase breaking his posture. He has a lot of hit points when it comes to his posture and chasing that will usually get you killed. Being greedy is one of the main things that I did and sadly um, that gets you damaged. The Buddha palm strikes are very easy to jump away from. What you need to be careful of is the delayed attack on his vertical swings. Those in particular are very hard hitting. They deal lots of damage, potentially one-shotting you. Uh, the sweeping attacks, you can take two of those hits. But in essence, the fight generally revolves around you being patient, using the retainer as a meat shield, allowing him to take Jizo's attention away from you, allowing you to get free hits. When he drinks in from his gourd, that's your time to land some attacks. Try your best to deflect as much as you can, but do not commit to deflecting because one big mistake can lead to your death. That's a guarantee. Uh, I believe in this particular that you will see one such situation occur. Um, Any time he releases his poison attacks, do not fear the poison. The buildup is actually very slow. So in that particular case, you are allowed to still move around within the poison and get in as many free hits as you can. Try work his life bar down. 
and keep your spacing. Big grappler attacks can only be evaded or jumped away from, so make sure you get away from those as they deal tremendous damage. The horizontal death blows can be jumped, so in that particular case I wouldn't say try evade. The range is very deceptive and the hitboxes on most of his attacks are huge as illustrated right there. It's very easy to die and get hit. But either that, slow and steady wins the race. Just take your time, evade what you can, and if you feel like your deflections are out of sync, do not bother deflecting. It's okay to block once in a while if you've got the posture for it. But whenever you can deflect, you do the best you can. At this particular point, your pellets are also a very good resource because the fight would have slowed down. There is no more enemies to distract you and it's now a 1v1 situation. I would personally like to know what happens uh, when you keep, if you are able to keep the retainer alive. But I feel like the damage output at this particular po portion of the game is so low, it's very difficult to do so. Uh, but generally speaking, be careful. Take your pellets and work that life bar down. Don't ever, I repeat, don't ever chase for the posture damage. And thanks for watching ladies and gentlemen. I'll see you in the next boss battle guide.